How are you all doing? I hope you're all doing great, and I hope you're all staying safe. Yesterday was the first day of CES 2021, and let me just say, it was so much better than I thought it was going to be. So much more happened, new VR and new AR tech got announced, and some pretty damn crazy Samsung controllers, which I actually am a huge fan of. So we have quite a bit to talk about today. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So for today's video, I did an abnormal amount of research. I have taken down quite a bit. So in order to not get lost, I'm going to do my very best to not read everything from my notes. But if you see me glancing down, I need damn notes. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the Panasonic VR headset. Now this one is quite interesting because it's unlike anything we've seen before, except for the last time we saw it, which was last year. This thing looks pretty insane and is nothing like what is out on the market right now. It looks more like goggles than it does a headset, but the actual specs of it are something that I consider interesting. We have two 2.6K panels, that's 2560 by 2560 per eye, and those are OLED panels with HDR in them, so that's really nice. We'd be getting nice, really crisp colors. We've got 10-bit color control, the world's first in OLED micro displays, to Copen's knowledge, Copen being the manufacturer of the OLED panel, and it seems that they are either planning or already have put 120 hertz on these panels, which is insane because that means they are going to be super smooth and that crispness of OLED, 120 hertz, and HDR is just going to be amazing. Now again, these don't look like your conventional VR glasses, and I'm pretty sure they are 3 DOF and not 6 DOF, but you know, with those NOLO trackers, you could potentially make them into 6 DOF glasses. Again, they look a lot smaller, than the ones we're used to, so that could be nice. All in all, I'm looking forward to this one. Now, this one I am super, super excited on. A Dutch startup called SenseGlove have released their SenseGlove Nova, and can I just be the first to say, this looks absolutely amazing. This, it just looks so futuristic, so, so cool, and I am not going to be getting my hands on this for reasons that will become very obvious in a little bit. They're using four magnetic friction brakes to apply force feedback to the glove, which is really cool, especially implemented in a glove like this, but everything seems to be enclosed and quite nice. Nothing is on the outside as on the gloves we've seen so far. Force feedback is applied through these strings to hold your fingers back. This is really, really cool, and honestly, I can't wait to see people trying this out. However, this will be designed for VR training purposes, which means that it doesn't come at a nice cost to consumers, coming in at $5,000, or at least that's what I've gathered from the articles I've read. So I don't think I'm going to be getting this. However, if you guys are rich and want to try it out and tell me how it goes, please let me know. Now, this is super exciting, and I've, I've done a lot of research on this. I've learned quite a few things, and I'm going to try and explain this to the best of my abilities. I've never been 100% the best at explaining things. However, Serial or Creel, or I'm not sure, but Creel is what I'm going to call them, have created their light field prototypes for AR and VR. And this is super exciting for a number of reasons. Light field display technology is really, really cool and super exciting for us AR and VR consumers. Light field technology adds kind of depth to what we're seeing. Now, I'm going to read directly from my notes here because I'm going to mess something up if I don't. Switzerland-based Creel, which is developing a light field display, has revealed its first prototype. AR and VR headsets, and we're going to talk about those in a second. Light fields are significant to AR and VR because they are a genuine representation of how light exists in the real world and how we perceive it. This will allow us to focus on different parts of VR because clearly that isn't really possible right now with everything being on the same plane. So if you can imagine this right now, we're looking at an LCD panel. If you shove your phone into your headset lenses, everything will be in focus. However, with light field technology, you can see this dragon flying around here in this headset is 
coming in and out of focus, just like it would in the real world, which is absolutely insane. This would add another layer of immersion to VR and AR, which is exactly what we need. This is like the next step forward. Unfortunately, light field technology is really hard to develop, and the prototypes we have right now aren't exactly the best looking. However, Creel says this is just a prototype, and it is a step in the right direction towards a much smaller headset. The Creel AR headset set prototype has a resolution of 1000 by 1000 across a 60 degrees field of view, while the Creel AR headset prototype is approaching the size of something like the HoloLens, the company claims it will be able to fit its light field tech into a sleek glasses form factor by late 2022. Now that is a little bit away, but it's actually only one year away. Actually, yeah, it's not 2020 anymore. So pretty excited to see that coming, especially since later on news, I have more news about more AR glasses that I am super excited for. And with its VR headset, Creel says it's already employing the foveated light field approach. Now this headset does have six DOF with an Intel based sensor. So that's pretty cool. We're getting a six DOF. I mean, yeah, we kind of should be at this point. It's 2021. <laughs> now, again, these aren't the most beautiful right now. They're very bulky. But again, all of this is going to be compacted by 2022. Hopefully that's what they're hoping. Now on the topic of AR, we're going to move on to the Lenovo Think Reality A3. These look really, really cool. However, they're not the coolest ones to come out of CES 2021, and I will be talking about the other ones later, but these are looking good. Now, I never expected Lenovo to hop back into the VR and AR space after they released the Rift S with Oculus. However, that it seems to be exactly what's happening. The AR glasses are powered by a Qualcomm XR1 chip, which drives two stereoscopic 1080p displays. Now, 1080p is at the highest resolution we've seen in these before. However, it is going to be enough for AR to drive a few displays, and a few displays you will be driving, because this thing can power up to five virtual displays for max productivity and privacy in case, you know, you want to look at something and not let anyone else see it. I don't know what you're thinking about. Now, these are compatible with ThinkPad laptops and productivity machines, so I would assume they would also be compatible with our gaming PCs. However, we wouldn't necessarily be looking at it like that, or that's not what I want to use AR glasses for. Also, this is what they call them. They call them smart glasses, even though with 6 DOF tracking, they're actually more than that. These are augmented reality glasses. So that's what we are going to be calling them. The ThinkPad A3 shares compatibility with Motorola smartphones using a Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 series processor or better. Now, that's kind of weird. It also features DisplayPort compatibility, by the way. But that's kind of weird because why Motorola? I mean, yeah, I get it. They're Lenovo, but like, would that also mean that it's going to work with other phones? Plus, how does that even work? How does these glasses connect with phone and what does it display? I don't know. I'm super excited. That's some pretty cool news. The fact that you can drive AR glasses with your phone. Pretty good news if you ask me. Pretty excited for that. Now we're moving on to more VR because a Samsung Odyssey, you remember the weird thing looking like a bug with the bug eyes at the front? I thought, I thought it looked pretty cool. However, there have been new patents spotted by Let's Go Digital and these patents were awarded to Samsung last week. So that's pretty brand new news, right? These are weird. These are very weird. I really like them, but looking at these controllers, they resemble the Oculus Touch controllers but the light ring goes around your wrist. The top of the controller seems to have little to no buttons at all. It seems to now be a touchpad. How comfortable that is? I don't know. But this also seems to maybe have full finger tracking. I don't know. It looks very exciting, very new. And in a previous video, I was talking about having a common standard for all of these controllers. But hey, innovation is welcome in my book, and this is innovation. That light ring will have less chances of being damaged being around your wrist, because right now it kind of seems like Oculus has been changing it around a little bit. First, the light ring was on the bottom, which means that if you hit something, you broke the light ring. Now they move the light ring up top, seemingly protecting the light ring and allowing the inside out tracking cameras to see it. But at the same time, now if you punch something, well, you're breaking your fingers have fun. So innovation is quite nice. However, on another note, that design of the bug eyes seems to have changed. Now we're looking at a 
really slick looking panel by the way, and the cameras seem to be hidden behind this panel, which is quite interesting. Instead of putting them up front, they're putting them behind the panel, which I guess is going to add an extra layer of protection for the cameras, but I also don't know how that's going to impact clarity. But again, I'm not a designer or an engineer in any way, shape or form, so I'm going to leave that one up to Samsung. Anyway, looking pretty good. Let me know what you think about these brand new controller designs down below. I think this could be an interesting way to go. Now, it won't be as easy to grab the controller and then take it out, but hey, might not need grips anymore since if you let go, the controller is going to stay around your wrist. And the last news story that I have on my list here is Vuzix's... Wow, I, there's no way I pronounced that correctly. New micro LED smart glasses. Now, smart glasses are something I am personally super excited for. AR glasses are what I'm super excited for. But so far, we've been seeing things along the lines of big chunky around your face, and I don't like that. Like, that is not something you would want to wear around your face. Now, the Snapchat glasses have actually been looking quite nice, but they're not AR, they're just cameras. But it seems that Vuzix is taking this concept to a whole new level. Now, these glasses look super slick. They genuinely look like something I would want to wear. And they're planning on releasing this summer, which is absolutely blowing my mind because that is not a long time away. Now, their last prototype was supposedly going to cost around $1,000. However, this one has no name and has no price. So I'm kind of worried considering I really wanted to get these for summer, push out the old prescription lenses, throw them into those. But if they're going to cost like, I don't know, some unreasonable amount, I won't be able to get them. But I'm super excited for AR tech. I'm super excited to see what smart glasses will be able to do. Unfortunately, that AR tech will not be implemented into these. These are just smart glasses. They're going to project from a little projector onto the lenses. And this is actually pretty cool for me considering my right eye can't really see. There's going to be two projectors, which is exciting because my left eye can still work its magic, which is something the Google Glass actually didn't have when I wanted to try that thing out. But here is the best, best part, if you ask me. It's going to be running Android OS. Yes, we're gonna have glasses running full-blown Android OS, which means they're not going to need to be powered by anything, which is insane. However, they will connect to your phone, Android or iPhone, in order to, you know, receive notifications and things like that. So that's pretty cool. However, the things themselves will be running Android. So that's pretty exciting because you can have a map open, you can have anything open, and you're not draining your phone's battery trying to power them, which is, again, absolutely insane. They seem to be a little bit thicker on the sides, on the edges here. However, that doesn't really bug me because they look absolutely great, and it's certainly the best thing we've seen so far. They have gesture controls, they have Bluetooth, they have everything I would ever want from smart glasses. They have dual display cameras, and dual sensors. So pretty excited there. We're gonna be seeing quite a lot of really cool new tech coming out. And that was just the first day of CES 2021. I honestly don't know if anything can top the amount of incredible tech that we've seen, but I'm excited to find out surprise me. So that is going to be it for today's video, guys. If you liked it, please give it a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too. I got quite a bit of information to this one today. I'm pretty happy with that. Did quite a bit of research. So I hope that I explained it in a way that people would be able to understand. Again, I'm not 100% the best at explaining, but I do my best, and I hope I put it into an entertaining form factor for you guys. So, if you guys like this type of content, if you want to join the club, if you want to join the gang, 360p gang, we've got a Discord down below, so make sure to check that out. We have a Reddit down below where I want to see you guys posting your spicy memes. If you guys want to support the channel, we've got sick merch that doesn't put a huge ad on your body, sick mugs again, so mysticalstore.com. And if you guys want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel daily, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.